Hello friends, welcome to this session. Today we'll see how you can authenticate users using an AWS ALB and Cognito to access APIs which are deployed in ECS Fargate containers. Actually, you can configure an application load balancer to securely authenticate users as they access your applications. This enables you to offload the work of authenticating users to your load balancer so that your applications can focus on their business logic. Okay, so let's get started and we'll start creating the resources required. First, we'll go to AWS EC2 and here we'll try to create load balancer first. Now, before creating load balancers, we'll create target groups. Create target group. Now, for our demo purpose, we'll use IP addresses because we want to connect to ECS Fargate containers, a name, and our containers will run on 8080 port. So, changing this to 8080. VPC, I'll select my VPC where I want to create this. Health check, it will be slash. It depends what endpoints your container exposes for health check. You can select that. Any health check setting, I will leave default. Next, and create target group. So target group is created now. Okay, so next step is to create the load balancer now. So we'll go to load balancer, create load balancer. We'll select application load balancer, create. We'll give it a name. We'll keep it internet facing. IPv4, VPC, select, select availability zones and subnet in it. And select security group. So I have some security groups here. And I think this one is, the default one is okay. Listeners, obviously my listener, because I'm going to use Cognito, so it supports only on HTTPS. So I'll select HTTPS. Actually, right now I will just leave it. I will just select HTTP target group and create this load balancer and then we'll edit the listener and reconfigure it. So while it is provisioning the application load balancer, I will show you what you have to configure in Cognito. Under user pools, I have already created a user pool, but you can create a user pool, give some name there, and you can review defaults, test pool, review default, and create pool. You don't need to go through these steps. So I've already created, so I will not create this one, but once you create the pool, it will look like this. Inside there, you have to go to users and groups and create user. You can provide a username and I know have unchecked these and just gave a password. So username, password, that's what I've created for this demo purpose. And once you create user, it will show up something like this. Next is you go to domain name and create a domain. So you can give any name here and normally it will show to check whether domain is available and if it is available, you can create it. Now this domain name will be used by application load balancer. Once domain name is created like this, then you go to app clients and you can create app client. So if I show you, you can just give some name test client and leave all these defaults. Definitely make sure this is checked and I have not changed anything and once you click on create app client the app client will be created something like this it will have client secret client ID once app client is created app client settings will automatically get created for that app client but before we configure app client settings we should go to resource servers and create a resource server to create that you can just click create resource server you have to give a name and any identifier say I've given actually identifier as test but you can give RS and then you have to define scopes for your application so you can say read or write so read could be just to access get or write could be just to access post something like that and then save changes and once you have created uh, it will show up like this identifier read write resource server once resource server is created then we'll configure the app client and app client will show up something like this make sure you check the checkbox cognito user pool because we are using cognito and all the users within this pool will be authenticated callback url uh, right now just leave it i will come back once we have our alb setup then i will explain you how to set up this callback url make sure auth 2.0 flow you check this authorization code grant because alb supports this authorization flow the default auth scopes open id you have to select 
and in custom scopes because for our resource server we have created test read and test write so these scopes also have selected and then you can save it so our client settings will look something like this so now we'll go back to our load balancer load balancer is active now it's created and we already see a listener is there we can delete this listener because we'll configure a new one so we'll add a listener and here PLB supports HTTPS so select that 443 add actions select authenticate identity provider select Amazon Cognito Cognito user pool you see this is the user pool which we have created and app client is the same app client which we just created in Cognito and if you remember this is CCFG is the domain name which we gave to create the domain name server now add actions so once this is the first step it will do whenever request hits ALB it will authenticate first and then we need an add action whether it should forward or redirect or it should provide a fixed response so for us it will be forwarding it to our ECS container and that will happen through our target group so this is a target target group which we have selected now this is important part here we have to attach a SSL certificate which could be from ACM IM or you can import one now I have already created a SSL cert for my domain name raviblog.com I will add this here so load balancer is created and listener is configured here so if you see the first step will be to authenticate and then if authenticate passes then it will forward it to your ECS container now once the load balancer is created you can note down the DNS name here this is the DNS name for load balancer you can directly access it in your browser because it is internet facing one what I have done in my demo here I have created a C name record and I pointed this DNS name to test.raviblog.com so if I run test.raviblog.com in browser it will actually send a request to this load balancer and that's why if you see in Cognito configuration app client settings for callback URL you have to give URL like HTTPS colon slash slash and either you can give directly this as your ALB DNS name or if you create a CNAME record like this which I have done pointing to ALB then you can just give the record name so this is the subdomain name which I have created and then you have to append with slash auth to slash IDP response so this will become the callback URL after receiving the request the response will go back to this particular URL that's why this is required so now we'll go to ECS and deploy our container so here we have to create our cluster uh, before that we'll create task definition for our container create new task definition now uh, here you can have Fargate EC2 external so you'll select Fargate next step give some name so let's say article definition select a role ECS task execution role the rest here yeah, memory you can select whatever minimum required for you for demo purpose I want least then we can add container details so container name is article container and image so this is the URL from ECR how you access your image uh, soft limit if you want to give port mapping say I want to map 8080 now command shell so here you have to provide health check command so you can copy this my container will be accessible at 8080 so I'm giving this interval you can give some time timeout in five seconds retry is three rest of it you can leave it as default I'm not going to change anything and say add so container is added and these things I will leave as is default and I will say create so view task definition and this will actually if you go back to task definition it has created new task definition here now we'll go and create cluster so create cluster select networking only next step give it a name article cluster I don't want to create VPC because I have VPC so it just creates a cluster we'll refresh I go back to cluster it's created so within this cluster we'll create a service and task so click create service forget service um, select platform version latest create cluster service name article SVC number of tasks I just want one task here this is the one which we created article def 
so task definition I have selected that rest I will leave it default next step select the VPC this one subnet subnet this subnet and you have to select at least two subnets so select these two security group I already have one so I will select existing security group which would be maybe this one we'll select later that it allows so yeah it allows 8080 port range from the security group of my load balancer so this one is right and then public health check grace period now here this survey should attach the containers to load balancer target group so I will select application load balancer and it automatically shows me the load balancer name which we have created container name ports so we will add load balancer do you want to create new no we already have one target group we already have one so we will select that one and our health check path will be same as default slash next step no changes here review the changes and create the service so it will take some time to provision this task and start the containers so my task is provision it's running right now service is also active if you go in task inside task you can see health status is healthy so ECS container wise everything is up and running now we'll go to load balancer and check whether container is registered with target groups so here you can see it's healthy and there is an IP address from the container so everything is fine so setup is now configured ALB is able to communicate with container and ALB is also configured to authenticate user using Cognito now we will test it using browser and postman calls so we will open a new browser and if you recall I have set up this particular domain pointing to DNS of ALB and you see the moment I try to access ALB it is first sending me to Cognito to authenticate so I will enter username and password and as soon as it authenticates it immediately comes back with the response from the container now whatever token it has accessed after the authentication it has kept it as a session so if you see here it keeps it as a session cookie name and this session cookie name is saved in the browser as well so if I do another request to another endpoint let's say slash articles then it's not asking me to authenticate again and it's providing me the results now if a user has to access my container API which is behind ALB it will always be authenticated before the access is given to the container now to access this endpoint from postman is little tricky because when you try to access test.riblog.com and you try to send actually it pops up a sign in page asking for username and password and then it doesn't work so as a workaround what I have done is you go to browser and try to access the endpoint it will ask you for username and password enter and before entering submitting just inspect this page and once you have access you can see under network login now the login request had a payload which has this form data so these are the details which were actually sent to sign in so I will right click this and copy these copy as URL bash go to postman refresh the postman and then import import allows to import any curl data paste it so this whole data we can import here and now if you try get call I believe the cookies will be set and we will get the response let's try again yes here it is so if you click on cookies here now you can see those cookie sessions for test.ravi.com are available here and as you know once you are authenticated these cookies will be used until they expire so they will have expiry attached to it if you go to application cookies I think you have to refresh here to see expiry here it is so it will have some expiry date and time so it will expire after six days I guess that's what it is set to now 
till then you can actually use the same session cookie which is created now you see uh, I can actually now do some other get calls to see all the articles I just click send and I can see the response I can do some post call to post some data so in body I can write to create one new article into it send and status is 200 created and we can try to fetch all the articles right now there is ID 1 and ID 2 article if we send to get rest of it so there is another article created so friends I think uh, this session would have helped you to understand how you can secure your container API behind ALB and you can use Cognito for that you can authenticate your users before they can access the API and we'll see you next session thank you so much for watching this